Yeah. No, me and him are having a conversation. Yeah, Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Wait, We're talking. Wait, Why are you so rude? Five minutes, five minutes. Sorry, this one. is not the caliphate. You are not the caliph, and me and him are not your dimmies. I'm very much of the opinion of Martin Luther King that men should be judged by the content of their character, not by the colour of their skin. And Dr. Yasser Qadi, a leading Muslim, yes, says that there are people. holes in the narrative that Muslims have about the Quran. Because Muslims have lied to themselves, saying that the Quran has never been changed. And what I see in the Hebrew Israelite movement, in black identity movements like the Nation of Islam and like the Hebrew Israelites, is a reverse racism. Go on, bro. Yeah. Um, my question is obviously, this is an English speaking country. Yeah. How long has it been? Uh, the Anglo Saxons arrived probably around the 4th century AD. Um, they basically butchered the Celts for about a century, so I'd say from about the 5th, 6th century. So, you know the Bible? Yeah. Before 1611, yeah. what religion were you going before? So, Christians have always been Christians. We are disciples of Christ, we follow Christ. The Bible, KJ, yep. got translated in 1611. Yeah. So that's a, that's that's history. We're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about so before yeah. 1611. Yeah. What was your book of choice? Brilliant. Now, please note, brother. This is how you talk about history. You base it on facts. So the brother is right. 1611 is when King James, the first of England. Uh, published what became known as the King James Bible. It was actually originally King James the Sixth of Scotland, but with the death of Queen Elizabeth, the two kingdoms became unified under the one monarch. Because King James was the son of Queen Mary, and Queen Mary was the daughter of King Henry the Eighth. What before this time there were other Bible translations like the Bishop's translation, the Bishop's Bible. The, 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 bishops, the, the, the bishop's Bible came before the, the King James translation, as did the Tyndale translation. But all of these translations have a, a, a history. They go back, and they go back to a guy called Desdiri Erasmus. Desdiri Erasmus was a Catholic uh, polyglot. He could speak about 13 languages. He was a studier of various different fields, a history culture, art, science, philosophy. He was a deeply intelligent man. And he made what was called the Novum Grecum, the, the Novum Grecum uh, Testament. But, well, that doesn't matter, bro. I'm telling you history. You wanted to know history, I'm telling you history. So Desdire Erasmus uh, underwent a, a attempt to translate the, the Latin Bible, which was the Vulgate, which was used by the Western Latin Church, into Greek. And he did this by using the earliest Greek manuscripts that he could find. And he produced a number of different revisions of this Novum Testament Grecum. So the German Bible, the first Bible translated into German by Martin Luther, was translated from Desdere Erasmus's first edition. But the, I don't remember. But the, the, the third edition of this Novum Testament Greco was the one that was used for Tyndale, and it was the one that was used for the King James Bible. Now, it's a beautiful work of English literature. It is an ornament to the English language. It is a masterful use of the English tongue. I'm very proud of it as an Englishman that I can hold up the King James Bible and say that the King James Bible is my book. However, it isn't the best translation. There are problems with the translation. There are better translations today, more accurate translations, translations that had use of other textual manuscripts, Greek manuscripts, Latin manuscripts, Gothic manuscripts, um, early Slavonic manuscripts. Because when you're translating a work from one language into another, 
it's better to use multiple different sources to do that translation for a number of different reasons. One is because it improves the accuracy of the translation. Two is because it allows what we call textual criticism, which allows us to identify the earliest possible reading of the text. Now every book has textual variants. The Quran has textual variants, the Bible has textual variants, but the advantage of the Christian is that we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of manuscripts to compare, which is far better than in Islam, where they don't have as many texts to compare. So the books that you mentioned that was before created, how many books were there in those books? Because I know all the books from from the Hebrew text, like um, they came from Hebrew. So and then like Lamentations, all of these. The other books that you mentioned wouldn't have those books because those books are coming directly from Hebrew. Or from so Hebrew. Let, let, he's talking about the Hebrew. So what How we got? Books are, are they, so we got to understand something. Okay, God bless. We got to understand something. The Holy Bible exists based upon a covenant system. There was an old covenant and there was a new covenant. Within the Bible. That, that, that was, that, that's how the literature emerges. The literature emerges because of these covenants. Moses was sent to liberate Israel from Egypt and he was then given the first five books of the Bible. The descendants of the, the Mosaic Covenant then had prophets sent to them that led to the emergence of other prophetic books and other books of literature and wisdom and worship like the Psalms and the books of wisdom like Ecclesiastics or um, the book of Job. The new covenant comes with our Lord Jesus Christ and with that new covenant, a new literature emerges. The four Gospels and the writings of the Apostles. We know that the New Testament came one, from... One second, one second. Now, the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. But 200 years before our Lord's birth, before our Lord's birth, the Jews translated the Hebrew into Greek, called the Septuagint. And what happened was, when the Christian community was in Palestine, the Apostles and our Lord was using the Hebrew text. But the moment the church moved out of Palestine into the Jewish diaspora, they started using the Greek Septuagint as their Old Testament. And so the church was very comfortable with using both the Hebrew and the Greek. They didn't have any fetish about the language. They were happy to use either text. The doctrines of the church were there before any of the books were written. If you read 1 Corinthians very carefully, it says, in my earlier letter, which means that 1 Corinthians is actually 2 Corinthians. In the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 1 to 4, it says that Luke has put this account together so that Theophilus may know the certainty of what he believes in an ordered account. Which means that Theophilus believed the things in the Gospel of Luke before the Gospel of Luke was written. In the Gospel of John, it states that there were many other things that our Lord Jesus Christ did that were not written down. And I suppose if the, well, they were all written down, that the whole world could not contain the books that were written. So it's really important for you to understand that Christian doctrines came before the Bible, which means that discussions about textual variants or discussions about canon of scripture or discussions about translation, they are important questions. They're significant questions, but they are not fundamental questions. No fundamental critique of the Christian faith can ever be made from arguments about canon or textual variant or translation. They are weighty questions, they're important questions, 
but they're not fundamental questions. So the, the, the first five books you said is the Septuagint, right? No, the first five books were the Pentateuch. So, I heard one of your followers, is the Talbot, the Dreadful. He said that they don't believe in the Old Testament no more, and the Old Testament is the thing of the past. Do you, do, you, do you agree? So what the brother is talking about, very often Christians are clumsy in their words when they try to describe this, and we'll say things like, we, need to pull him up. we don't believe in the Old Testament. What we mean by this is that we don't follow the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant, if you look at, if you look at the whole right readings of, um, of, of the Scriptures, there was a covenant made with Adam, there was a covenant made with Noah, there was a covenant made with Abraham, there was a covenant made with Moses, there was a covenant made with David, and our Lord Jesus Christ brought the new covenant. So the way that we understand the Bible is through this covenant key. Christ said, I didn't come to, to change the laws. Correct. Which obviously the laws are in, um, from Genesis right back to, who is it? Genesis, Exodus, um, what's the other one? Oh yeah, Deuteronomy. De Genesis, Exodus, number Deuteronomy. Yeah. So these are mainly the laws and how you know they should operate obviously the lineage of christ is coming from the old testament yeah and um he he obviously emphasized that i'm an example for the law he's like i use myself as a sacrifice to be the law to to stick to the laws and commandments okay, so let me let me address this so what how, how do we understand then as christians that christ said i have not come to destroy the law but the, what was the rest of that sentence? I have but to fulfill the law. So we, he has One to, second. Obviously, he, has to, he has to have a law to go by in yeah. order to fulfill it. Exactly. So Christ fulfills the law of the Old Covenant. He doesn't do away with the law of the Old Covenant. But if a law is fulfilled, it means it, its purpose is completed. No, that's well, it. let me finish. No, let me, no, 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 brother. I, you asked a question. You made yeah, a statement. Allow me to reply, please. Otherwise, I just have to raise my voice. So, the, the, the Christ fulfills the law. And Paul understands it this way. If you read Hebrews, what does he talk about? I just wanted to pause. One, one, one second, one second, second, one second. When you read the book of Hebrews, do you believe in Hebrews? Right. So, what does... One second, bro. Right. So, what does he say in Hebrews? He says that the old covenant was under the Levitical priesthood. But we now have a high priest in Jesus Christ. The old covenant had the sacrificing of animals year upon year, day upon day. And the reason why they had to keep doing it is because these things were never sufficient. But we have the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The old covenant has the temple, but the new covenant has the church as the temple. The old covenant had the law of Moses, but the new covenant has the grace of Jesus Christ. The old covenant is completed in the new covenant. It doesn't disappear. It's still there, but it is transformed because of Christ, because of the new covenant. The Sabbath is still there. But Jesus Christ is our Sabbath rest. The Sabbath was there to make, to keep the, one of the things to keep the people holy before Yahweh. Jesus Christ is the one that makes us holy before Yahweh. Majority of, okay, the, uh, the New Testament speak of Christ and Christ speak of his God. But the Old Testament are instructions from God who says, these are, you're meant to keep these from generations to generations. And then Christ, what Christ did, he came and he fulfilled by being um, by being very strict with the with the laws before. He didn't tell you the laws. He didn't say these are the laws. He didn't say that. All he did was say, "Follow me, follow me." So by following him, it doesn't mean that you don't also have to read the laws and see how best you can apply these laws. Because every every nation is an individual. So even Muslim needs to follow the laws. But Christ doesn't point out what the laws are. You have to go back in Deuteronomy 
and numbers and follow the laws like he says that you shouldn't mar the corners of your bed and I'm sure that Christ was a perfect example for the law so I don't think that the New Testament is more important because God speaks more in the Old Testament um, than the New Testament so let, let, let me reply to this the, the, the thing that the thing the reason why I disagree with you bro the reason why I disagree with you is because I think that Paul disagrees with you Paul speaks Think of, think of the examples, for instance, of the apostles. Peter, in the book of Acts, receives a vision commanding him to eat foods, unclean foods. And he is commanded by God to eat these unclean foods that are unclean according to the laws of Moses. Now, given what this brother is saying about how he thinks that we should still keep the Old Testament law... Me? No, one second, one second, one second. I didn't interrupt you, but I'll start interrupting you from now on. Christians in the New Testament, if we take seriously what this brother is saying, then that means that he has made a mockery of God because God himself commands Peter to eat unclean foods. And Peter says, Lord, I've never eaten anything that is unclean. And then God says to him, do not call unclean what I have made clean. And when did he make it clean? He made it clean when our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is not what goes into the mouth that makes a person unclean, that is then evacuated from the body, but it is what comes out of the heart. And the gospel writers, in, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, understood this as Christ declaring all foods clean. So that we have it in the Gospels, that all foods are clean. We have it in the book of Acts, that all foods are clean. But we clearly have commandments in the Old Testament saying that some foods are unclean. Now what does this mean? Option one, that the Bible contradicts itself. That's one option. Option two, that the Bible should be read through a covenant system in which there are old covenants and new covenants and new covenants replace old covenants in which case the Bible can say two different things but they don't contradict because of the covenant system or option three as this brother is trying to do which is trying to assert that he believes in the gospel and in the book of Acts but then still wants us to keep the Mosaic law. Can I just ask, are you a, a Rastafarian? Can I just read this? Can I just before, ask, are you a can Rastafarian? Can I just read this before I answer you? No, no, I want to ask you, because we've established that we can interrupt one another now. So, are you we a Rastafarian? I never, I never interrupted you. Did if he I, interrupt me, guys? If I tried to interrupt you and you, and you said, I'm still talking, I just stopped, because there's no point carry on um, interrupting someone. Brother, I'm just asking you. I can see the medallion. I, I respect. I respect. I respect this king very much. But are you a Rastafarian? If that, if if if, if by respecting someone it makes me a Rastafarian. No, 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 no. Rastafarians have clear beliefs about Ali Selassie. They believe have, that we, he is the history. The, the history that's there. Do you be, do you believe Ali Selassie is the second coming of Christ? Maybe he could be the first. But that's a different conversation. Okay. I want to read this first. Okay. I want to read um, Deuteronomy um, 7 verse 9 yeah. and it says Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and, and um, mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and a thousand generations wouldn't be just like do away with with all the statutes are important because all the statutes that the Almighty made with us, the Israelites, they they are not to the Christians. Obviously, they can say they don't want to do with Old Testaments no more because the Old Testament speaks of only of the Israelites, and it's a book for the Israelites and not for Christians because Christians are it's like an amalgamation of things that come under one umbrella, which many nations obviously they join to. You know, they join to other nations. So the birthright of an Israelite is different from the birthright of a Christian. Are you a Hebrew Israelite? I, I'm not. I'm an Israelite, not Hebrew. Because I don't speak Hebrew. Hebrew is a language, right? Yeah. So, so what we have here, guys, 
is it, it, there's this 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 modern cult that is emerged from America. Modern yeah. cult. It is a modern cult. Right. right. So I'm right. just going to have to speak up because the brother says he doesn't interrupt me, but he does interrupt. So. What we have is a modern cult that has emerged from America. It is emerged from America. They're called the Hebrew Israelites, the Israelites. They're a black identity movement that seeks to speak to black people based upon the traumas of the slave trade. And I, I understand where that desire for identity comes from. And I understand why Black folk will speak against the abuses of the black? slave trade. One second, because the Hebrew black Israelites and the Israelites do claim, do claim to be the original Israelites. Guys, I just want to say to you, if you're black, you can stand up for black identity and black rights and the idea of standing against the slavery without believing utter nonsense. Black people are not descended from Isaac and Jacob any more than Caucasians are. No, I know the that. Jews I are descended that. from Isaac and Jacob, and it's not racist or controversial to state a fact. So how can you the, Jewish the Jewish people but not, have been not, identifiable not, through history. Generation to generation, we know who the Jews are. They are the circumcised. They are the ones who try to keep the laws of Moses as interpreted by the Pharisees. No but our Lord, our Lord teaches, our Lord teaches Lord. that he has brought a new covenant. And he has brought that covenant in his body and his blood. That new covenant means that the old covenant of Moses, which was only ever a tearcaker covenant anyway, is fulfilled. And Jews and Christians, Gentiles, black and white, are united in the one community of the church. However, why I would say, why I would say, do these black identity movements not talk about the 1400 years of continuous Islamic slave trade. 1400 years of Islamic slave trade. You see, you see, you see, I'll debate you in a second, bro. I'll debate you in a second. I'm talking, don't be rude. May I, may I address that point? One second, I haven't finished. 1400 years, and Dr. Yasser Kadi, a leading Muslim, says that there are holes in the narrative that Muslims have about the Quran. Because Muslims have lied to themselves, saying that the Quran has never been changed. But the evidence says that it has. Where's your evidence? It says that it has. Now, no, me and him are having a conversation. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Wait, We're talking. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you so rude? Five minutes, five minutes. Sorry, this is not the caliphate. You are not the caliph, and me and him are not your dimmies. We are having a light like all of I'm these lost. other people. I'm lost. I'm lost. You, you were speaking. I'm asking him questions. I hate you, my brother. Brother. I hate what I'm saying. Yeah, this is speaking. You were speaking to us. So why do you not respond? We were speaking yeah. together, and everyone was involved. This is what I'm asking him questions. Yeah. Go on, brother. Okay, go on. So you refer to. Um, people are melanated as black yeah and um it's a common i, I term. refer to you as a caucasian which is fine okay so caucasian Christy, Christy, and white Christy. at least i know Christy your people, background man. your identity and where you're coming from and where you're going. but when you refer to me as just only black does that mean that the, the bible has ruled us out as black people or are we mentioned in the bible so so let me let me be clear the question is because I referred to the brother as black and I spoke of black folk, which is a, you know, black is a term that we use in our language. It's the part of the lingua franca of the English language. That the brother is asking, does that mean that I believe that the Bible has ruled black people out? Did anyone hear anything like that trip from my mouth? What did I actually say? I said that Jews and Gentiles, Scythians and barbarians, man and woman, Black and white are united in the new covenant, in the church. The brother said, 
that he calls me a Caucasian. He knows my identity. I don't root my identity in being white. I root my identity in being a follower of Jesus Christ. That is the sum and the total of my identity. It's where my identity begins. It's where my identity finishes. The whole question about how much melanin you have in your skin is irrelevant to me. I'm very much, I'm very much of Martin. I'm very much, I'm very much of the opinion of Martin Luther King that men should be judged by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. And what I see in the Hebrew Israelite movement, in black identity movements like the Nation of Islam and like the Hebrew Israelites, is a reverse racism. No, just let me, just let me is me, is based on the idea, on the idea, on the idea that black people are the original Hebrews, that they're the original Jewish people. This is not what the Bible teaches. It's not what history teaches. You can stand up for being black without was having Moses to buy Israelite. into nonsense. Was Moses, an was Moses an Israelite? So the question is, was Moses an Israelite? Yes, he was. He was a descendant was a of Isaac man? and Jacob. Was he a black man? Um, I don't think we have any evidence to say that he was so, Nubian Nehemiah, African. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, was he an Israelite? Job, was Job an Israelite? David, was King David an Israelite? So the question is, who are the Israelites? The answer is, the Israelites are the descendants of Isaac and Jacob. That is what the Bible teaches. People who come from Sub-Saharan Africa are not Hebrew Israelites. People who come from Northern Europe are not Hebrew Israelites. But because of our Lord Jesus Christ, Northern European Caucasians and Sub-Saharan Africans are grafted onto the vine of Jesse. They are grafted onto Judah. They are made Israel by adoption. That is the identity of the Christian. Which chapter is that? Okay, he asks me, what chapter is that? I'll show him. Because this brother doesn't believe the New Testament. I believe in the I believe in the New Testament. Why are you lying on me, bro? Because you don't believe the brother. You I believe, don't believe no, it. I believe the, I believe from Genesis from, from in the beginning to right. Revelation. So when so when Genesis when the book of Acts says that food is declared clean, do you believe it? It depends on that per particular person. It's, it's, it's Peter, like the Apostle obviously Peter. Your body is your temple, right? So, hold on, Let, can I speak? Yeah, go on. Your body, the Bible tells you that your body is a temple. So, whatever you put in your body, you have to give account for that. So, you can go and you can eat pork, beef, whatever you want to eat. But what goes into my body is, 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 should be vital to me. So if I, if I said to you, everything that God makes is clean, it doesn't mean that you cannot eat it, or it doesn't mean that it's good for you. You understand what I'm saying? But what I put in my body should be nutritious and should be um, equal to my desire. So are you saying that those foods that the Old Testament declared unclean are now clean? No. Right, so this is why you don't believe in the New Testament. Because right. in the New Testament, all food is declared clean. And I would say the same, I would say both of them, but I would say what goes into my temple is down to me. Alright, say for example, if you want to go and eat pork, yeah, in this time, I don't have to eat pork. I'm not saying you do. Because if, if I eat pork, I know what complications will come with it. I'm not saying you do. The question is, the mo the mosaic. I'm going to try again, and I'd, I'd like you to follow the follow the logic of the question, because I have made an accusation against this brother, so it's important that I can justify the accusation. I have said that I don't believe that this brother follows the New Testament, and here's my evidence: the Old Testament says that some foods are unclean. The New Testament states that all foods are clean. Now. Do you believe what the New Testament says that all foods are clean? And that particular guy that you mentioned that says that that says. Um, so you do believe all foods yes. are clean? I, no, you don't. You mentioned one guy that, that had a conversation with Peter. God. Was it Peter? And he said he said um, that have you, he hasn't eat anything unclean. 
and then God said everything that I made is clean, right? It was like it was like a banter between them, between both of them, like saying, okay, I, yeah, it's like it's like a banter. God, uh, the brothers' God, defense. Yeah, it's humorous. God is humorous. The brothers' you know, defense is this: that God was having a joke with Peter when he said that all foods were clean. That's the brothers' defense. Yeah, you, I would say you can eat what you want to eat. Yeah, yeah, but it's not expedient. But, but, I can eat pork, and it doesn't my... So the brothers' defense, the brothers' defense is that God was having a joke with Peter. It was a bit of banter. You know, God is a bit of a wide boy. He's going, you know, oh, Peter, don't declare what I've said is clean. You can eat all of that. God does not joke can this we, way, bro. Let go, let's go to it. Firstly, firstly, let, let, let's, let's go to that. Because you'd see the banter in it. But <laughs> you'd see, you'd definitely okay, see the banter. Okay, let, let, let's find let's it. Let's find it. Let's find it. It's in the book of Acts. Acts, yeah. It's where Peter's on the, the rooftop. But, but it was I in a vision. The it was in a vision. The it was in a vision. Why, why can we trust Peter's vision? Well, because we trust Peter. <laughs> but why do we trust Peter? Because he Bro, taught the, he taught I love, the crucifixion I love, and I the resurrection. Because you know what? Many other you know why? He's a defender. He's a defender. Well, he's, he only defended. How, do, how, how does Peter know that it really was the Are you a Muslim by any chance? I am. Guys, the police are saying, could you separate? Axel, what, what, Axel. I'll try to speak up. That's what. So uh, let, let's just find it. So where, where's Peter on the roof? Uh, uh, hold on, let's just find it. Peter on the roof. Peter on the roof. Right. So guys, the bit where Peter declares all food clean. Now remember this brother's defence, because I love this brother. I want him to come to the full knowledge of the truth. But that means that he's got to put his pride aside and accept what the Bible says. On the next day, as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up to the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. But he became hungry and was desiring to eat. But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance and he saw the sky open up and an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground, and there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the air. A voice came to him, get up Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means Lord, for I have never eaten anything unholy or unclean. The voice replied, the second time, the second time what God has cleansed, no longer consider unholy. This happened three times and immediately the object was taken up into the sky. Yeah. So the New Testament is clear. Foods that Peter considered unclean were declared clean. But it was a vision. A is it, vision. Does it not count? So he, said, he, says, he says, no, while Peter doubted, doubted himself, we just what read this it. vision... No, you didn't read 17. You stopped. Go on, go on. Muslim brothers should come next week and stand with the Chapel. No, while Peter doubted himself what this what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were seen, which were sent from Cornelius, had made inquiry for Simon's house. So it's a, it's, a, it's a vision to be, it's like an allegory. It's like the dream is like an allegory. No, the, 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 the vision precedes Peter going and evangelizing Gentiles. Gentiles who were not Hebrews. So while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Yes, and they were Gentiles. Arise therefore, and that's it's a vision. So the meat, the, the flesh and this thing that he saw in the vision is not because Peter, like I don't eat flesh. I'm a nature, I'm, I'm from nature. I don't eat nothing um, pastor, right? I don't eat no flesh. Brother, I come from nature. So to eat another animal is, is beyond me. I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm nature. I, I believe that the trees and the herbs are for fulfillment of my the, the, the vision, The vision that Peter receives declares food as clean. Why? Because Peter is about to go and do evangelism amongst Gentiles. And what will they do? They will sit and eat. 
That's what will happen because that was hospitality in those days. It's much better than your English hospitality. When you walk in, they offer you a cup of tea and a cucumber sandwich. You say no and then they never offer it you again. In the Middle East, in that area of the world, when someone visited your home, you lavished on a food for them, you lavished on a feast for them, you gave them food. Peter was being sent to the Gentiles. I'm a Gentile, this brother is a Gentile. Every Northern Caucasian is a Gentile, every Sub-Saharan African is a Gentile. Peter was going to the Gentiles on mission. So, can we go to Genesis 9 verse 4? You can go to Genesis 9 verse 4 if you want. Alright, we go to Genesis 9 verse 4 and it says, But, um, no, it says, Every moving thing that liveth shall, shall be meat for you, even as the green herb, and I have given you all things. And then and the 4 says, But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. So anything that consists of blood is unclean for us human beings. Because it, in, in, in science, it causes bacteria. Because the bacteria is in the blood, and the soul is also in the blood. So when you eat flesh that consists of blood, you're not only contaminating your blood, but you're also making yourself sick. Okay. So, the brother is trying to say that in the new te in Genesis it says about not eating meat. But the brother accepts that Christ is our best example. Christ was not a vegetarian. He says yes he was. Honey, right. Honey. Listen to this, listen to this. This is preparation for the Passover. So that now the Feast of Unleavened Bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. On the Passover, Jews ate lamb. Okay. The way to, the way the way we eat um, flesh is it would have to be burned with fire. Was Jesus a vegetarian? <laughs> Come on. If even if I if even if I'm gonna eat a piece of flesh, yeah, it would have to be burned with fire. Is Jesus a vegetarian? That's what the Bible says. No, my question is: Is Jesus a vegetarian? I don't know. Right. I am. Brother, all I'm saying to you, bro, is just accept what the Bible says. But the Bible says, the Bible says Be that Because you're not reading it how, with the covenant how, key. How, how long, how yeah. long does it take when you kill, when you kill an animal? Yeah. You must consume it within three days. So, l let's be clear, brother. Let's be clear, guys. This is why, central to your understanding and use of the Bible, you have to have the covenant system in mind. Because if you don't read the Bible through the idea of which the covenant, covenant, which, covenant? which what, if you don't read the Bible with the idea of the covenant, you end up in this kind of confusion where you quote the covenant that was given to Adam as if it was applicable to the new covenant given by Jesus. The covenant that Christians stand under is the covenant given by Jesus Christ, not the covenant given to Adam. Oh, I want to, because Christ never did no covenant. I want to know Christ's covenant. That he did. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I want to know. That. So, what covenant did Christ give? So the brother, the brother asks a question. He says, "What covenant did Jesus give?" Right. So this is the covenant. Listen. Luke chapter 22. So we've established in Luke chapter 22, Christ and his apostles sacrificed a lamb and then ate it. It also says in this, Take this and share it amongst yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant. So Christ is giving a new covenant. The covenant of himself. The covenant of the sacrificial lamb. That is the new covenant. I'll let someone else uh, take the Okay. I'll let someone else. Brother, what's your name? 
friends, it's really nice to, to talk with you. I love your demeanor, you know, but, but what I would encourage you, if you take anything away from this conversation, take away this, that the Bible has to be read through a series of covenants. And when you read it that way, all of these kinds of questions that you've been asking me make a lot more sense. And when you do read it that way, you'll be reading it much more like Christians read it. If I only read the New Testament and not know We what do the read the Old Testament. Christians do read the Old Testament. We do read the Old Testament. Okay? Okay. They said it's very important. Go on, bro. Go on. I'm yeah, listening. Yeah, well, my question is about like, uh, Acts 29. 1529. Acts 15:29, brother. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna murder Papa. Can I, can I give you a gift? Like, what's that? It's a, it's a book. Yeah, it's a, a gift for you, Papa.